Hi, Tony from Songwriters Chop Shop here, and welcome to the best songwriting tools in the world ever. If you want to improve your songwriting skills, stick around to the end of this video because I'll be showing you a technique that can have a serious impact on your melodies and top lines and how you can apply it to your songwriting today. This technique can give you stronger melodies, can give your lyrics flow and a feeling of spontaneity. It can not only help communicate the emotion of your song, but also create emotion. You can use few words to say a lot and allows you to use a lot of repetition without sounding repetitive. So let's get to it. Melody has two main elements, pitch and rhythm. I'm gonna just focus on rhythm today and how it relates to the overall vocal melody. We need to get some technical stuff out of the way first but don't worry I'll make it quick. The rhythm of a melody is produced by notes that make a sound. In between those notes or sounds are spaces. A consistent pattern of sound and space produces rhythm. Think of a clock, a heartbeat, a car alarm. The main notes and corresponding spaces a vocalist will deal with are whole notes, half notes, quarter notes, eighth notes and sixteenth notes. So that's about as much music theory as we need for this. Now, because I'm talking about vocal melodies, we need to also consider words and strings of words. For now, again, we'll just focus on the rhythm. So we have two elements of a vocal melody that produce a rhythm, and we will be joining it with a third rhythmical element that is our music. And if we don't have these elements working together, things can sound messy. We need to get them working together and supporting each other. We need some melodic management. There's one more thing about words. It's a bit academic, so let's try and have fun with it. Have a quick listen to this. Take my horse to Old Town Road I'm gonna ride till I can't no more I'm gonna take my horse to Old Town Road I'm gonna ride till I can't no more Twinkle, twinkle, little star Somewhat nursery rhyme-ish. Like I said, words produce a rhythm, but they also have their own internal rhythm. This rhythm occurs because words are made up of syllables, and these syllables are either stressed or unstressed. No one knows what makes a syllable stressed. Maybe it's losing a job, a bad breakup, getting slammed on Twitter for something they said in the wee hours while doped up on meds. The fact is, it happens. There are stressed syllables in the world, and we shouldn't just ignore them, especially if you're a songwriter. The technical term for this in song and poetry is meter. Both Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and You Give Love a Bad Name have the same amount of stress stress syllables in each line, meaning they have the same meter. So rhythmically, these two melodies are similar, but in all the ways that matters in songwriting, they're identical. Let's have a look at them through the dumb dad system, where stressed syllables are replaced with dumb and unstressed syllables are replaced with dad. The nursery rhyme is a little more straightforward as you'd expect, but we see the same amount of stressed syllables per line placed in the same position in the musical bar. If you need to, go back and have a listen. Hear how the dumb stressed syllables fall on the main musical beats of the bar. That's the whole point of this. So make sure you can hear it. If this is new to you, you can identify stress syllables by the way they sound higher in pitch and elongated. The word syllable even has a stress syllable. Syllable. When it comes to putting lyrics to melody, this is really useful to know. If you're still a bit confused about this meter concept, here are some guidelines that will help. One syllable words are usually stressed when they carry meaning. That's nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs. One syllable words are usually not stressed if they are prepositions, articles, conjunctions, personal pronouns. Personal pronouns are are usually not stressed unless some contrast is involved. An example will be a contraction. Contractions that are normally unstressed, like I and you, when joined with words that are normally stressed, like am and are, can get stressed, i.e. I'm yours. Two stressed syllables can come right after one another, like on a steel horse I ride, or there's a fire starting in my heart. Compound words like Moonlight and multisyllabic words like moonlight have a primary stress and a secondary stress. The primary stress is almost always on the first syllable. So we've talked about the rhythm of words and melody. Now let's talk about putting them to work and how they can make our melodies better. Let's look at some different examples of melodies where the melodic pitch changes but the melodic rhythm stays the same. Like everything else in life, a melody is easier to work with when broken into manageable chunks.
And notice how the stressed syllables fall on the strong beats of the bar. And looking at the dum dad system, we can see that the lyrical melodic lines are just small groups of dum da or da dum. The length of a line or a phrase is determined by its number of stressed syllables, its meter. There are two basic ways to look at this. If we look at You Give Love a Bad Name, just from the point of view of rhythm, we see the section resolves in two lines. It has the same amount of stressed syllables in each line. But if we look at Old Town Road, we see it doesn't resolve. It doesn't have the same amount of stressed syllables in each line. Now either way is fine, but there is a point of interest here when we look at the unresolved line. This is also known as common meter. So whether you like the song or not, there's a part of your subconscious that wants to hear that resolution. For example, did you ever watch a movie or a TV show that you didn't like, but you had to stick around to see how it ends Game of Thrones? Humans seek out patterns unconsciously, so the unresolved nature of common meter keeps us hanging on till it gets resolved. Common meter is made up of two lines, one with four stresses and one with three, long then shorter. So any phrase with a longer first line and a shorter second line will work in the same way. It has forward momentum, kind of like when you put your foot where you expect a step to be and you stumble forward a little bit when it's not there. The main point is that the two phrases don't match up. This can also have an effect on the content of the lyrics. I think a good example of this is something Paul McCartney said during an interview with Stephen Colbert. He talked about how some of the great singers like Sinatra and Elvis covered his song yesterday and mentions how they all slightly changed the words. In the middle, I go, I said something wrong. Now I long for yesterday. Well, the, all of them said, I must have said something wrong. <laughs> but they're not owning up. If we look at this in terms of meter, we see that the extra syllables of musta adds length to the second line. So there we're back to the longer line, shorter line. Now the last line is shorter and not resolved. We're left hanging. We're left longing for a resolution. The extra syllable throws the section off balance and actually changes the deeper meaning of the lyric. So Paul is singing a fact and this is supported by how he organizes his phrases, structured in lines of even meter. He longs for yesterday, sure, but he knows what he did. The others just seem confused confused by what happened. Ooh, I don't know why she left. Did I do something wrong? Well, yes, you did. And even your song structure is telling us how oblivious you are to the needs and wants of others. With the extra word, the balance is thrown off and the confusion is implied in the structure of the lyrics. So where you place words in a melodic lyrical line can have a big impact and we can use this to our advantage. So this concept has two elements when it comes to songwriting, the rhythm of lyrics and how they line up with the melody of a song. I know I said I wasn't going to talk about pitch, but just as a side note, the pitch of a lyrical note won't have as much of a highlighting effect as placing it on a strong beat of a bar. So matching up these elements means things get kind of subjective. If we were to approach this as you would in poetry, we would find some syllables that are stressed in speech might not get stressed in a song and vice versa. And if we were to approach this as you would with just music, some of the intervals in the melody might not suit the shape of your words. I don't want to get too technical here with poetry and music terminology, mainly because I don't know any. We just need to know if the primary stress of a word in a melodic rhythm is placed in a stronger position of a musical bar, let's call them hotspots from now on, it makes these words stand out. To keep it simple, a bar of 4-4 four, four time is called so because it has four quarter notes. Those four notes or beats are considered as follows. The down beat is the strongest, the second beat is weak, third beat is strong, and fourth beat is weakest. This also translates to a four bar sequence with the first bar being the strongest and so on. So in a musical bar, these four beats are the hotspots. And if we plug our important words into them, they light up like Christmas trees. A good rule of thumb here, if you wouldn't emphasize it in speech, you probably shouldn't when singing. But like I said, it's subjective. These hotspots light up any word that's placed on them. And if you light up an unimportant word, you're taking it away from the important ones. But what's important or not is up to you. So looking at our melody as a dumb dad pattern, we can decide where to place the important notes. Also, another example of structure influencing content, if we use these hotspots, we don't need a lot of words to get the meaning across. Look at this song by Brian Adams. We were young, wild and free. The whole sentiment of the section and most of the song is summed up in those three words and these three words are placed on hotspots, lifting them out even further. It's a nice little hack. Try summing up the idea of your verse or chorus in one to three words and then sum up your whole song in three words. You can even do it with one word and a contrasting word and then let that contrast to all all the work. Because you know I'm all about that bass, 
about that bass, no treble. So let's stop there for now. By combining rhythmic motifs and the dumb dad system, we have an easy way to manage our melodies. This can be used to create a melody from scratch or as a way to organize an existing lyric or melody that you already have. Listen to songs or better yet, get a visual representation and check out what parts of the melodies repeat, either rhythm or pitch or both. You might be surprised to find out how many songs there are just based around one melodic idea. And when you come across a song that doesn't, listen to it and feel the difference. And ask yourself how you might use these ideas is to enhance the audience listening pleasure of your songs by creating an experience, a journey for them to go on. Okay, that's it for now. Don't forget to leave a comment if you found these ideas useful or if you have any questions to ask. Until next time.